So, I, Roger, it is. <laughs> right on. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, how did you end up in Phoenix? I kind of heard the story back in the day, but I, I want you to just kind of tell me how you ended up in Phoenix and Scottsdale. Well, truthfully, I ended up here um, with my wife, to be honest with you. She wanted to come back here to finish her um, education. She, she was an ASU student, and she kind of left in there when she was uh, uh, her third year, only needing one more year to complete. So it was one of her goals. Let me finish, let me go back and finish college, you know? And uh, so I, in support, I wanted to come with her. And of course, you know, we just we were newly wedded and I just wanted to change. So I just wanted to go, you know, I want something different. And uh, we ended up here, which was the best thing that ever happened to us. Cause then shortly, like within a month or two of being here, uh, my wife was pregnant with our, our first daughter. Wow. So did you, my, I heard that you came here for motorcycle school. That's not correct? That is not correct. You're talking about MMI, which is here. Right. I, I, I visited here a few times MMI because I, I did MMI back in 1992. I went, but I went to the campus in, in Florida. But there are other campuses here in Arizona. I actually fell in love with Arizona when I would come visit MMI here to do my extensive training in, in uh, electrical specialists and, and uh, engine rebuild for Harley Davidson, I was working for Harley Davidson. So I would come here for all the specialty programs that they would ship. They would send me from Harley Davidson, New York, here, and and then uh, be here for a week, do the extensive just programs, get my merits, whatever. But I would all travel. That's when I fell in love with Arizona. That's when I started like going out, going like Cottonwood, Sedona, just going everywhere you know and I was like wow this is really beautiful I, I, I back then I said you know if anywhere I would love I've traveled to the United States I was like anywhere I would love to live would be here and so it would be here I am that's a that's a big big change from being in the city you know I grew up in New Jersey and, and, and you know I spent a lot of time going up to New York being out here is a lot different it is uh, it, it, it took some getting used to it's different when you come and visit it for a week like I was doing and I guess I really needed to get away from the city craziness or traveling with the band and just going visiting other cities sometimes you just need to get away from it but I, I guess you know the truth is that you know I, I don't like the cold weather <laughs> honestly so I needed to be somewhere warm and that's what I, I love about this and uh, I, oh, there always was a decent little scene here there was always good people here and New York was changing so fast, it's continuing, it continues to change where, you know, I was okay, you know, I wasn't, I didn't want to be, you know, I didn't want to be in bars and all that crazy stuff my whole life, I needed something different, I, wanted, I, I felt like I was in, trapped in, a, in, a, in an area where I couldn't, you know, I would rent for the rest of my life and I couldn't better myself in any other way. Here I had opportunities, you know, as soon as we moved here, my wife got her diploma, you know, and, and then we started having our kids, and you know, I live in a, I live in a beautiful mid-century modern home that I would never even thought of back home, you know. And I also was into the cars and the bikes and everything. Now I have my 1954 Chevy, which I love, in my garage, not in some street in New York City. So there's a lot of perks here. Yeah, I miss stuff in New York, and I love to visit. In fact, it's the other way around now. I love going there for a week and visiting. And that's good enough for me. I, I can't wait to come home, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, but you still have a lot of ties. I mean, your band was uh, you know, founded in New York City. Um, a lot, big part of your fan base is from New York City, and I'm sure you have a lot of friends in New York City. Uh, yeah, well, don't, don't, don't kid yourself. I mean, my, my heart, I, mean, I may be living here, but my heart belongs, you know, it would always be in New York City. I still is till this day, watching everything going on. My heart aches because I love New York. There is, there, you can't take me. You can take me out of New York, but you can't take my heart out of New York. You know, and, and I do love going there. I do love everything about it. all my friends are there. I have made some friends here too, of course, but all my memories are there. You know, it's just, and it's good that I go there to, to kind of re rejuvenate. You know, and, and I'm okay coming here because I think I just like the the, the peaceness and quietness of being here. I think I, I really do. I think I, I've always been a little bit more, but introvert I guess so, you know and I, and I need I need my peace and calm before I go out there and, and introduce the storm which is what I'm good at I'm good at going out there and and getting that stage on fire and bringing it you know what I mean so but I need 
I need to relax to get that, you know. Right. Um, and, and while we're talking about New York, um, how's Vinny doing? How are the guys in the band that live, I mean, other than Vinny, do the other guys live in the city? And, and what are they saying about how things are going right now? Or just three even some of the friends you still that, you know, that live there, you know? Yeah, three of my guys are still in New York City. One's in Boston, Craig's in Boston, uh, Massachusetts. And he's home, you know, it's not nowhere near as bad as what's going on in New York City, as we all know. Uh, Vinny is in New York City, still in his apartment, you know. Um, Mike is just a little bit outside. He's in Teaneck, where everything was kind of hot in New Jersey. And um, Danny is, uh, he's, He's on the border there of Queens, New York. Just everybody's just kind of hanging in there, waiting for things to shift, move, or whatever. I mean, we, look. The truth of the matter is, what's going on today? It's 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 when, what's happening needs to kind of happen just for the greater of all great. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, we would all love to be on a road. We would all love to go back to two, three months ago where everything was. But we really need to think about today, what's going on today, and we have to do the right thing for to move forward. You know what I mean? Like I look at it this way: like one of the things that's bothered me the most is that you know, yeah, this virus does affect like a lot of the older folks. Hey, look, I'm 54. A friend of mine just passed yesterday. It was her too. You know what I mean? From the virus, um, and it's not even just that. It's just that like what I would do for my kids. If it was reversed, let's just say this virus was a virus that attacked only kids, infants, and you know, like I would do everything in the world to to defend that by kids. So why can't the, that generation do the same for elders? You know, it's all just about human life. It's just about being a good human. And uh, and I'm I'm for you know as much as yeah, there's a fun, there's horrible financial burden is going to happen. Of course, I'm living it, you know, and so are a lot of other people. But I think uh, I think maybe we'll come out of it as some kind of better humans out of this. Maybe we'll just know what it's like to, to be alive, you know. I hope so. I hope I hope, I hope the message, that's my message to everybody. I, I'm, I'm about like, you know, all those, oh, everybody on the front line, all the first responders, everybody working the grocery stores, everybody just doing what they're doing, doing their parts. I am so grateful. I'm grateful that they're here for us, you know, and at these times, you know, like, it's incredible, you know, and, and, and that's the people who we need to look out for, you know, this, it, it, all this other not caring affects them, overloading the healthcare system affects them affects what they could do to help us, you know, God forbid. And uh, I think in the end, some of us are going to be really better humans out of it. So, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. You were saying that it's it's affecting you as well, your family. You got, you know, you got to put food on the table. Alice Cooper kind of, <laughs> I guess he has some big compound because he didn't care, but, you know, like it affects a lot of people. Right now, you're you're not able to tour, and that's... Is that your primary source of income? I mean, how is affecting you guys? It absolutely is right now, you know. Um, and there's really no end in sight. I mean, when when does it when is it safe to go back touring? There's no like. It, it, we don't know, and I'll be honest with you, it's it's scary. You know, everybody's got their own small private little safety net, but that safety net's going to come a little bit scarier as the months like August come around. And like, you start going into your panic modes, and, and we don't know. We don't. We don't know. That's the hardest thing of this whole thing. It's it's an invisible virus. Nobody knows. The information is as only information as we can find as we seek for ourselves. And we don't know what the future has hold for us. I mean, as musicians, this is it's hard, you know. And at the same time, you know, like I feel for not only just musicians, just everybody, like the restaurant business, everybody that's trying out there that really put so much passion to what they love, you know, whether it's art, music, uh, their own private business, whether it's, you know, something that they, they dedicate so much passion into. This is a this is a, a thing that's really affecting everybody. Directly me, absolutely, directly, every one of my bandmates, you know, we, we talk about it, we, you know, we're like, okay, um, you know, what, what are we going to do? We all have children. We all care about being home with our children, and that's our most important thing. And 
making sure we're all kind of doing our commitment, you know, and trying to stay home. We all are staying home, not even trying. Everybody's home. I'll tell you right now, everybody agnostic front is home. Um, and just trying to ride the wave. It's, you know, it's, it's just we don't know what the future has in it. And it's a scary thought. As, and, as, and I don't think I'm the only musician dealing with this. Then again, there's other musicians that are probably well off and, and they could ride the waves a little further. And good for them. I'm not knocking them. I'm just saying it's, it's a hard thing. Yeah. I mean, what do you do? Do you uh, Are you trying to come up with some lyrics? Are you guys trying to, in the meantime, write some material? Were you guys... Well, absolutely. We're all, we all talk about writing stuff but that's a that's a tricky thing here Aaron we just released a brand new record yeah so you were gonna go, go go out. We, were just, we were just getting ready to do our tour for this brand new record and everything's at a halt so it's kind of tricky because yeah we're all always writing and but we still need to go out there and promote our newest album you know which we're on our label nuclear blast which is called get loud which is probably funny because if you go into it and you start reading lyrically the contents of that record it's so like what we're dealing with today anyway in a different way um but yeah we are actively writing we're actively doing our parts you know we're trying to get a hold of each other's friends trying to make sure everybody's okay everybody's safe everybody's you know just doing their whatever parts we can do there's only so much we could do don't forget we're all indoors and there's only so much we do you know, spreading a message is probably the most important thing. Um, I've done a couple interviews online of fun stuff, you know, just to get away from, you know, news, 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 or whatever's going on. Like, I've done a thing, I, I love rec collecting records. I did a thing on, on records, you know, I just going through records and fun stuff. And 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 at my home, to be honest with you, my wife is is, a, is an instructor at Gracie Jiu Jitsu Phoenix, which is we, where we all train. Uh, Jiu Jitsu. If you guys, anybody want to come down and train with us, you know, uh, well, we can't now. <laughs> but if you know what I mean, <laughs> yeah. so we have mats at home, and my whole family trains. So for physical stuff, we're training at home. We're, we're you know, we're watching videos. In, in that respect, we have a machine here to run with. We're just trying to do the best we can. We really are. Wow, damn. <laughs> it's same thing here, man. We got a. a 15 month old baby uh, Lewis so you know keeping him kind of busy and juggling him Emily's parents moved here so that's kind of been a help but yeah it's uh, you know it's it's, it's, yeah, man. it's crazy these are un these are unprecedented time and, and you know what it's like what we really do need to do is figure out what we can learn from it uh, and to move forward because I don't think this is going to be the last time that something is going to happen so we really need to all all, I mean, not just the, the struggling people, everybody in all their parts, hopefully, you know, everyone figure out, you know, this is, this is like, you know, you know we're so, we, we, we feel like we're so kind of safe here in Arizona. We don't get hurricanes. We don't get, really, we don't get tornadoes or earthquakes. Anything's minute, whatever. And like, oh, nothing can kind of touch us in here. But you know what? Shit can touch us in here, you know? And it's a, it's a rude awakening for a lot of people. We need to figure out how to prepare, unfortunately, like they do in Florida for the hurricanes. And, and this is something, I mean, all, all the hoarding that's going on, it's awful, you know. And what's even worse about it is those people that, that are price dodging all this stuff. And it's just like, these are the people that I think, they're not good humans. Yeah. Just put it that way. And, you're you know, seeing the best and you're seeing the worst of people. Just of, of little old people in the stores and they're standing and there's nothing there. Like, how can you sleep with that, you know? Right. Yeah. You so you see the best right now and you see the worst. There's a lot of people giving some good stuff. I mean, but how do you feel about that? How do you yeah. feel about this, this little old man who's just trying to get a roll of toilet paper or sanitizer or food and you got your whole garage full of it? How does that make you feel, you know? Yeah. I hope you... I hope, and if anybody's listening to this and, and is one of those persons, I hope you do something better out of it. You, you should be a better person. Um, let me change the subject just a little bit because I want to touch on the, the fact that, you know, being a not an agnostic front, you guys have traveled, you've played on what, pretty much every continent except uh, continent except Antarctica, I would assume. <laughs> you've been to Asia, you've been to Europe, you've been all over, right? 
Tell me about, yeah, tell me about yeah. how many, I mean, you don't have to give me an exact number, but being a guy that's traveled the world and knowing that this also is impacting, this isn't just a, a virus that's hitting the United States, this has hit the entire world. And I know you have a lot of friends um, probably all over the globe. Um, just your thoughts on that. So tell me about being an agnostic front and playing all over the world. What's that like? Well, when I joined a band, I was uh, 16 years old. <laughs> Who joins a band at 16 and stays in it? <laughs> you know, like a lot, of, a lot of people are like, oh, it's a band, it's fun, they move on, they get careers, blah, 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 blah. Well, I've always been, I love, what, I love everything about this. I've always been very passionate about it. To me, it's more than a band. It's always been a movement. And, you know, we were always that band or we're always the underdogs, but we speak about oppression, overcoming oppression, kind of where we are today, you know. And that voice has made an, an impact worldwide. It's bridged a lot of people from all over different countries because they, that, that kind of connected with people on all levels. I always felt like if I threw some of my lyrics in a bottle and threw it in the ocean, and a hundred years from now, wash up in a, on the beach, somebody could open it up, and yeah, it's no genie, but it's lyrics, but somebody could probably relate to that a hundred years from now. You know what I mean? And I think that's the secret to our success is being genuine, being honest, being real. Who wants to be a part of something that's not real? So all that being said, that uh, those opportunities have got me to travel the world. And I'm very grateful of it. I'm very grateful to have been in different countries, seeing different cultures. It's just amazing what's out there. And I think it's also broadened my mind so much because like, I've seen so much. I've, I've had food with different people, different cultures, different stuff. And I, I feel like it's way better than any college education I could have ever achieved. So it's, it's, it's my, definitely my, my calling, you know what I mean? And traveling the world and playing in all these places. And then what's even cr crazier is that, you, you know, we are, we're an American band. We, we sing in English, but watching all these people that don't, English is not their first language, just singing along, you just jumping off the stage and having a great time, just celebrating of us being in there and all over the world, Asia, um, Europe, have we been as far, as far, well, what, what, as far east? We've been, to, we've been to St. Petersburg, Moscow, you know, like amazing places we've been to. We've been to Turkey. I mean, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, you know. Uh, we've been to uh, Indonesia, like these little areas. This is South America, we've been to Brazil, we've been to Argentina. I mean, it's just amazing. It's something that I'm grateful of. And these are all good, good people, and they're all struggling. We're all in it now, and I see it now. I see all my friends. I'm on Facebook, and I see a couple friends or on Instagram, and they're like, they're locked down in Argentina. They're locked, you know, self lockdown. They're doing it for the greater of all greaters. I think, I think most of our scene is kind of like that, you know. We, it's it's just a little different thing, and um, it's been the greatest opportunity ever. And now being locked down myself, or being here, of course, I'm self isolated. I did it for me for my family and for everyone. I've been here since the 11th. I've actually only left my home twice because I had to and I protected myself. And that was just to go to the pharmacy to pick up prescriptions and my wife needed prescriptions and so did my son. Uh, it's just regular maintenance prescriptions, asthma medicine, stuff like that, you know. But uh, I'm just trying to do my part as a good human, you know. And But I miss, you know, we were supposed to be on tour. We we're supposed to be come right now. We we're supposed to be getting ready for for a tour and start our tour off our new album Get Loud and it's supposed to start this month are we in April I don't even know where we're at. yeah we're in April mm -hmm. it was supposed to kick off this month and now those dates are being moved they're in every every the whole music industry is in shambles everybody's rebooking so everybody's stepping on stepping on stepping because everybody's trying to get certain dates there's only so many venues and now you have to rebook everything and then we know who knows if that gets pushed back you know and then we were supposed to go to Europe in June I don't really know I don't know if it's even, not only if it's possibility, I don't even know if, you know, because where we're at, what the situation would be, if, if it's even going to happen. But of course, hey, look, I got to look at it one way. Like, these are friends and families worldwide, and, and some of them are dearest, my dearest friends. I'm in touch with them. A lot of my friends in Germany who are our crew out there, whatever. And we, we just, we all know, we all know that we're doing this for the better of all better, you know. And we will come together. We will celebrate. We will be, be out there. We will at one point be singing along and, and life will move on, you know? Uh, 
let's see. I'm trying to think if I had any other questions for you. I don't want to take up too much of your day. Do, 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 do. Are these good quest answers? I don't even know. No, they're fun. They're great, man. Are you kidding me? Uh, let's see. That's pretty much it, I think. I mean, unless you have anything else to add. Um, you really hit on a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of topics there. With, you know, it's just a, it's a tough time. I know some bands are uh, doing stuff online. They're doing shows online, um, performances, whatever they can. I saw one guy doing uh, like sort of a behind the scenes, like you know how he came up with this song and this and that. So I think people are trying to get creative right now. You know, still trying to look for ways to. They, uh, he had a virtual tip jar so if you know people wanted to help out they could uh, send them some uh, yeah you know I, I've been sitting back thinking about how to be creative myself um, like I was I was thinking just it's funny you mention this so, you know I don't know if you're familiar I wrote a book and uh, my right the name of the book came out about three years ago I thought about maybe doing some kind of a you know I always thought it was a way to do one of those where you go and do like a, a, a talking like a book talking or you know what I mean? But I thought about maybe do a little Q and A on some of that stuff, and just to keep a connection with the people that need something. And the people are, are, are like they just want to connect somehow. Yeah, they're stuck and in the and house. But the record thing was good. Uh, unfortunately, because we are so in different parts of the country, we can't do a little live performance, which we would have been fun to do a little live thing. But that's not happening. You know, I'm here in Arizona, those guys in New York, and rest of them, and Craig's out in Boston. But there's other ways to connect, and, and I'm giving it a thought. I'm giving it a thought because I, I think I, I, I definitely want to. Uh, I want to do a little, even if it's just a little fun, like, hey, let's talk, let's have some fun, you know, let's, let's laugh about something, you know, let's, let's pick this subject, let's roll with it. Um, yeah, of course, the best, one of the best things you could do out there for bands like on our level and just about any band is, is, is of, of course, you know, like any, like any, any kind of, uh, purchasing anything online like shirts and stuff that you know you could do all that for all the bands which is awesome but um, I always felt that at times like this you know it's grateful I'm very grateful that was to happen I feel people's hurt and people's you know they need to everybody needs to research so it's kind of one of the last thing I'll do is ask for anything like that I'd rather just give them me you know, like myself as, and just be there for them. And hey, let's have fun. You know, at this point. Cool. Um, quick set of questions. Tell me about Agnostic Front. Um, you know, for the people that don't know about Agnostic Front, that are going to be watching this story. How did that come about? For you, I mean, you said sixteen at sixteen years old, you joined this band, and you never in your wildest dreams thought you'd be all over the globe. I'll How does something like that happen, Aaron? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just like I, like I, I just found people that I could really connect with, and I felt for the first time in my life that I I found friends and you know out of my family that weren't blood that felt so gentle, I felt so real, I felt connected to something, and that's, you know, back then, you know, I would, I obviously, other bands before Agnostic Front, when I was asked to sing at Agnostic Front, I just felt, we were all friends, we, we never thought we would leave New York City, in fact, how ignorant was I that back then, I didn't even know there was anything past the five boroughs, I didn't even know New York State was so big, I didn't even know. I was so caught up in living in my little circle, but besides my band, which was with my family, I didn't know anything past, you know? And in doing that first tour was amazing. Like, I didn't know. If you would have if you would have told me when I was 16 years old that I was gonna travel the world with my band, you know, we're, we're deaf, we're, you know, we're, we're not easy on the ears over here now. We're, we, we're, we're a punk hardcore band, you know? In the original 80s a cargo band from New York City from the CBGB area but we we just had something to say something that people wanted to connect with and that was part of the whole movement back then you know and but if you would have told me that I was going to travel the world 
I probably would have laughed in your face. <laughs> I would have been, are you crazy? Are you kidding me? Like, I didn't know anything past the A7 Club or Max's Kansas City or CBGB's or a couple places in the show place in New Jersey. I, you know, the Anthrax in Connecticut. Like, I was surprised. I was, and I was even way more surprised to find out that, that, that people all over the world like this. I was amazed to see that people in the America, like touring our first tour, na- national tours. I was like, wow, this is cool, this is fun. And then to find out that people cared about what we were saying, what we were doing worldwide, mind blowing, completely mind blowing. 